Unit 1 Vectors Chapter 6 and 7 test. The reason it's 6 and 7, it's a little bit of both because it's only dealing with the two-dimensional vectors. So if your teacher is doing it in a different order, there may be some questions on here that you haven't done yet, and um, it may be missing some, which will show up in my next unit test when I cover 6.5, which is um, dimensions, the, the R3 vectors. Okay, this is only R2 vectors. So the first question, first two questions are pretty basic. They're testing to see if you understand what a vector is and what a scalar is. So Orge is pushing a crate with a force of 250 newtons toward the west. Is that a vector? Your answer is yes, it is a vector because it has magnitude and direction. Okay, that would be your description. A box has a weight of 84 newtons. Yes, this is also a vector. We know that a newton measurement is measuring um, the force of gravity as well. So the box has force and direction. You'd write something in there. Sound has an intensity of 50 decibels. No, this is not a vector. There is no direction. Vector or scalar? 24 meters squared? No, it's a scalar. No vector here. It's a measurement. No direction. The magnitude of vector PQ is also a scalar. Just because you see that little vector sign, you have to look that it's the magnitude of the vector, which of course is not has no direction. Vector PQ, yes, that's a vector. It even says so. And negative vector P is also a vector. There you go, that would have been a quick five marks to start you off on a good foot. Question three, the diagram shows a parallel pipette. You don't have this diagram in the handout because it was handwritten, so I've written it here for you. Um, you have all these vertices that you have to make some sense of in terms of vectors. They want to know what is AB minus BF. So AB is going in this direction. So any of these vectors like HG, EF, DC, they could all be represented by AB. But I want to subtract BF. So if this is plus BF, this is minus BF. So the best choice here would be pick EF and then FB and that would result in EB. AB plus CG. AB, CG is the same as BF. So AB plus CG is the same as AF. Sometimes these seem more confusing than they really are, right? AB plus HD. Well, if I'm going to do AB and I'm going to add HD, I want to be able to add HD, then I could add AB, but then I would be stuck because my FG is going up and I don't have that one. So I need to start below here. See if I go HD plus AB plus FG, BC is the same as FG, so I end up with E to C. <coughs> Excuse me. Now this time I want to do AB and I want to do minus HD. So HD minus HD would be going in this direction. So either DH, CG, BF, AE, those are all going in the same direction as HD, the negative of HD. Okay, so I'm going to choose AB to start. Negative HD is the same thing as BF and then add FG, and I end up with AG. I hope you followed along on those. There's, they always seem a little trickier. Okay, given the vectors A, B, and C shown below, draw the required sum slash difference, showing the resultant. Make sure you answer questions properly. A lot of my students forgot to show the, um, the sum in the end. So I want to do A plus B plus C. So A... And then I'm going to add the B and add the C. So you want to make sure you're doing in the same direction. So I have one, two, three, four going up. So I'm going to start that one down here. Let's go one, two, three, four. There's my vector A. Now I need to add vector B, which goes down one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, I just made it. 
down here. So there's A plus B and now plus C. C is going directly this way. Three, one, two, three. There's my vector C and that means my resultant is from here to here. And there's your R. R. So from the tail to the tip. The second one says 2A minus 1 half B. So two A's, this went up, what do we say? One, two, three, four. So I need to go up eight. So let's go from here. It should be enough. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So here's my two vector A's minus a half B. So minus a half B. So B is going this way. Minus a half. Ooh, I'd have to go up. I didn't leave enough room, but half of it. One, two, three, four. What do we say here? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I need to go up three. Well, let's pretend I moved it down. One, two, three. So this is minus one half B. And my resultant is going to be from here to here. Be nice if you used a ruler. Okay, so that was pretty simple as well. Just seeing that you know how to sketch and add a few little vectors together. Number five starts with a force question. An object weighing 20 kilograms is hanging from a ceiling by two ropes, ropes that make angles of 45 and 60 degrees with the ceiling. Determine the tension in each rope. Make a sketch. Okay, I'm going to freehand this. So it's going to be like this. <laughs> Very bad straight line. 20 kilograms. So we have a weight down here of 20 kilograms. And there's one rope that goes 60 and one that's 45. So let's say this is about 60 degrees. This probably looks more like 45. Don't worry what they look like really. Just label them. We'll call this T1 and T2. Now remember that the first thing you need to do is convert the 20 kilograms to newtons. So I need 20 kilograms times 9.8 and that's going to give me 196 newtons. Okay, now if you remember how to draw these, the first thing you want to do is draw a force diagram. So I want something with 196 newtons going down and then two newton, two uh, vectors that add up to this 196. And that's this tension and this one. So put arrows on those and then it's always a good idea to kind of think about this is the ceiling so you can find your angles. So no ceiling down here but there was a ceiling here and this vector here, I'll put a little red arrow on it, is the same as this one here. So this is going to be 60 degrees in here and then my second ceiling mark I'm going to make up here. See this looks, this part here is going to look like this little ceiling here. So for this, this is 45 degrees in here. Okay, now we want to find all the other angles. This is a Z pattern. These ceilings are parallel. So that means this is 45 degrees in here. And these two are at, going to add up to 105 degrees. I'll just put it right here. Very small. This is 60. This is 90. This is 30. So now we've got all the angles on our diagram and we have, we didn't write the tensions on, should do that. So we'll call this T1, this T2, and I'm going to um, solve for the tensions. Okay, so first thing you want to do is we need to find the angle, um, tension one, let's call it T1. T1 is going to be put a little colon so you know it's not the equation. So I have the sine of 105 degrees which is this over 100, 196 newtons is going to be equal to so I can find T1. T1 is here. Here's my opposite angle. This is also 45 degrees in here. I guess we should have written that one on first. So we have sine of 45 degrees over T1 so the basic math for that, T1 is sine 45 times 196 divided by sine 105, and you should get T1 
is approximately equal to 143.5 newtons. And then you do the second one. These are pretty easy when you, once you've drawn this diagram, right, it's really pretty basic. So I have the sine of 105 over 196 newtons equals um, T2 force. So this one matches with this one, the opposite angles. So I have the sine of 30 degrees. I do my T2 calculation and I get approximately 101.5 newtons. Okay, so... On to an airplane question. It says a small airplane has a speed of 265 kilometers per hour. The pilot wishes to fly to a destination that is 520 kilometers due west. Now remember in my lesson about um, directions and airplanes and boats, this 520 kilometers is not in the same league as these, right? These are vectors. So we have, this is a distance due west. It's not a velocity. So this is what we're going to need to figure out how long it will take to get to the destination. So don't use that in your diagram. So we want to go 265 kilometers, um, uh, 520 kilometers due west from the plane. Okay, so we'll put a plane here, something like that. And... Um, he wants to go this way, but he has a 38 kilometer wind from the south, so that's blowing north. And he's going to have to go this way, which is his velocity of 265 kilometers per hour. And the wind has velocity of 38 kilometers per hour. And this is going to be my resultant where you want to go is the resultant, right? So from here to here. Okay, so now what I need to do is figure out, it says in what direction should the pilot fly in order to reach the destination? So I want this angle in here, and that's a simple sine theta calculation. Sine theta equals 38 over 365. And theta is approximately equal to 8.24 degrees. Um, I didn't see how many decimals, but usually two is sufficient. So that means he needs to fly at west 8.24 degrees south. So here's my north, south, east, west. So west, south. West 8.24 degrees south. Or your teacher might want you to say it the other way, like south and then so many degrees west. That will give you this really big angle, which would be just 90 minus 8.24. Okay, so how long will it take? So in order to find how long, I need to know this resultant velocity here, or the ground velocity, right? So that's a Pythagorean theorem question. So the absolute value of the magnitude of the resultant is going to be the square, well, if I put the square root, then I don't need the square here, but we'll erase that. 38 squared plus 265 squared. Okay, so we didn't need this. I'm just going to stroke it out, which is really bad because that's why you use pencils, because then you can use an eraser. And this comes out to about 262.26 kilometers per hour. So you can see he's going a little slower than his speed. So his ground velocity, because of the wind force, he's going to be slower. And that makes sense because this is the hypotenuse. Okay, so how long? How long means distance divided by speed gives you time. So distance divided by speed equals time. And in this case, the distance, now we use the 520. We divide by the speed and we get time. And in this case, it's approximately, um, what did I get? 1.98 hours or one hour and 59 minutes. Okay, don't leave a time in a decimal. You have minutes, seconds, that sort of thing. You can make it much more accurate than that. 
Okay, so there's uh, the plain question. Number seven, it says two forces of 40 newtons and 50 newtons at an, act at an angle of 60 degree, degrees to one another. Determine the resultant and equilibrant forces. So if you want to know the resultant, let's draw it first. So we have 50 newtons. Um, I'm going to put it about here. So I have 40 newtons. And I have 50 newtons. And I have 60 degrees between them. So to find the resultant, we need to use the parallelogram rule. So we're going to make like this. And our resultant is going to be here. Right, there's my R. So if this is 40, this is 40 newtons. If this is 60, then this is going to be 120 degrees in here. If you need to go back and see how that all works, actually, we can just sketch it like this. This is the F pattern. This 60, this is 60, add up to 120 as quick, quick for you. So in order for me to calculate this resultant, I need to use the cosine law. So the magnitude of R squared is going to be 40 squared plus 50 squared of it. You know the cosine law really well now. Minus 2 times 40 times 50 times the cos. I can't even write fast enough. Of 120. And you should get R. What did I get here? R is approximately equal to 78.1 newtons. Okay, so now I need to find theta, which is in here, because I need to know um, a direction. Determine the result. You must include direction for both. That was nice of me to tell them that, because you should know by now that vectors need magnitude and direction. So to find this angle here, I can use um, sine law. So the sine of theta is going to be equal to um, we have 40 newtons. Uh, I guess I could write it out the long way first. I'm just going to give you the, the actual. So 40 over sine theta equals my resultant, 78.1 over the sine of 120 degrees. And you can do the math on that. I'm not going to waste time, your time and mine. So about 26.3 degrees. Okay, so the resultant, I guess I could have put R too, the resultant is 78.1 newtons. And now you need to give direction. So I'm going to say at 26.3 degrees, this way is going counterclockwise, counterclockwise from the 50 Newton force. Okay, so you have to give which way you're turning. Okay, now the equilibrant, as we talked about, is the actual same distance. So we're going to go this way. This is your equilibrant. So your equilibrant is going this way. It has the same force but a different direction. So I need the direction for that one. Now, in order for me to find the direction, I can go from, let's go from here to here. So how far is that? Well, we know this one is 26.3 degrees. So this is going to be 180 minus 26.3 or 153.7 degrees. So then you make a statement for your equilibrant equilibrant is 78.1 newtons and you're going to say 153.7 degrees clockwise from the 50 newton force. Now you could use the other force. You could find the other angle from here around to here. That's up to you but um, that's why I did this one. Okay, question number eight. Calculate to the nearest degree the angle between the two vectors. So to find the angle, we're using the um, dot product. So we're going to say that cos of theta 
is the dot product of A and B divided by the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B. Okay, so the dot product, hmm, oh, I gave it to you right here, 10.5. Magnitude of A, so this is going to be 7 times 3, and that's 10.5 divided by 21. So theta is approximately, actually, it's actually 60 degrees, right? That You can do that little calculation. Now this one, I gave you the... Um, algebraic vectors, so you have 2, 4, and 3 minus 1. So for this one, I'm going to find the dot product. So same formula. I'm not going to write it out again, but let's do the dot product. So that's 6 and minus 4. So you multiply the x's together, and you add the, the product of the y's, which is negative here, over the magnitude of the two vectors. Magnitude of this is 2 squared plus 4 squared. That's square root 20. And 9 plus 1 is 10. That gives me 2 over the square root of 200. 2 over the square root of 200. And theta comes out to approximately 82 degrees. Okay, so there's an application of your dot product. Determine angle B in the triangle with the following vertices. Okay, so for an, in order for me to find angle B, I need to position it. So I'm going to make a really quick sketch here, just so you see what I'm talking about. So I have minus 2 and 1, 2, 3. That's B. I have 3, 1, 2, 3, and 1. That's my A. And C is 3, 4, 5, 4, 5, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So something like this. C, 5, 6. Here's my A. So what I want to do with this triangle is I want to position it so that <coughs> angle B <coughs> is at the origin here. So I need to know what BC is and I need to know what BA is. So remember BC, when we position it, it's going to be C minus B. So B is minus 2, 3. So B, C, C minus B, just for you to remember. So 5 minus minus 2, that's going to be 7. And uh, 6 minus 3 is 3. So that's one of them. And then we need um, B, C, we need B, A. And B, A, A is 3, 1. It's better if you write these things on. So I want A minus B. So 3 minus minus 2 is 5 and 1 minus 3 is minus 2. Okay, so I've got the two, I've got the two angles or the two position vectors here now. So what I want to do is find cos theta. That's going to be the dot product of BC with BA divided by the magnitude of BC times the magnitude of BA and BC dot BA. So I do 7 times 5 and I add 3 times minus 2. The magnitude of BC, that's 49 plus 9 is square root of 58 and 5 squared is 25 um, plus 4 is square root 29. So that gives me 29 over the square root of 58 times 29. And you can do that on your calculator. Shift, second function, cos, and you should get theta is, a, is actually equal to exactly 45 degrees. Okay, so when you, when you reposition this BC of 7, 3, you're putting it like right here, right? So once you have it in position, you can do this. You must position it first. Okay, we're getting there. Question number nine. Determine the scalar projection. The scalar projection of U. This is a little arrow. U on V, where the magnitude of U is 13, the magnitude of V is 15, and the angle between the two vectors is 118 degrees. 
So we have um, we have a situation kind of like this, right? So we have u is 13, v is 15, 13, so this is u, this is v, magnitude, and we have 118 degrees in here. And if I want to do u on v, I have to extend this, draw perpendicular, and I'm finding this scalar projection right here. Remember, no arrow on it. So I can do just this little calculation that u on v is equal to the magnitude of u times the cos of 118 degrees. And that comes out to approximately negative 6.1. That makes sense, right? It's going that way. And the last question, number 10, find and sketch the vector projection of m on n, where m is minus 2 and 1, and n is minus 3 and minus 2, minus 3, minus 2. Okay, so let's sketch this in quickly. So we have this vector, and we have this vector here. And I'm doing M on N. So this is M. This is N. So I have to draw a perpendicular from M onto N. It's about like this. And my vector projection is going to be right here. Don't forget to put the arrow on it. It's a vector projection. And now all I have to do is the lovely calculation. So vector M projected onto vector n is equal to the dot product of m and n divided by the magnitude of n. Um, you can put n squared if you want here and then just multiply all of this times n or we wrote it kind of m dot n over magnitude of n times n over magnitude of n which is the same thing. Okay, so m dot n, m dot n. So we multiply them and add them together. So I have minus 2 times minus 3. And I'm adding 1 times minus 2. And my vector, I'm going to put a big bracket around this. And the magnitude of n is going to be um, 3 squared plus 2 squared. That's 9 and 4 is 13. And I would take the square root of that, but because I'm squaring it, I don't need to. So it's 13, and I have minus 3 and minus 2. And this gives me 6, minus 2 is 4. So 4 over 13 times minus 3 minus 2. Remember, these are the coordinates of my vector. So I get minus 12 over 13 and minus 8 over 13 and they need to be in brackets it is a vector so that's like minus 1 and just over a half so that looks really good doesn't it and there you go there's your practice test hope that helped you out and we'll get on to doing the um, our three vectors next don't forget to subscribe follow along tell your friends see you in the next video